Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jacer who is not good at algorithms. In this video, I'm going to take a look at 636 exclusive timeout functions. Uh, we're told that on a single threaded CPU, we exit some functions. Each function has a unique ID between 0 and n minus 1. We store logs in timestamp or order that describe when a function is entered or exit. Each log, log is string with a format like ID, start, and timestamp. For example, 0 star 3 means the function with ID 0 start at the beginning of start at the beginning of a timestamp. 1 and 2 means the function with ID ended at the end of the timestamp too. Okay, so here's the difference. A function's exclusive time is the number of units time spent on this function. Note that this is, does not include the recursive calls to child functions. Okay, so like input like 0 start with 0, the, func the first function start at here. And then the second function start at here, and then the first, the second function end at five. Look at the, that to the start and end at different, right? It's the for start at the beginning, and the for end at the at ending, and then zero at the end of six. So for the first function, it actually occupied the time of zero, one, and six, three, and for function one, one, two, three, four. Well, it's technically act, act for uh, for uh, a recursive call. It's called a call stack, right? So it's actually like a stack. So when we are calculating this, uh, the exclusive time, if you take a look at, take a look at the graph, we only care about the segments, right? So the every time, no matter if it's a start or end, it will create a little segments like zero to one, one to one to five, uh, two to five. And five to six, so the seg time actually uh, belongs to the topmost functions in current stack, right? Call stack. So for zero one, the current top function is zero, so it belongs to zero. This belongs to belongs to one, so it's uh, and the last one belongs to zero. So actually, this give us the uh, idea that we could do what to to just uh, use a stack. To keep track of the top most function and uh, update the time of each function by segments right so when we are uh, handling a log actually every time it, like, the segment will be generated well cool so we create a stack to, to do that let's create a stack is called stack this should be array of uh, number. We need to transform. We don't need to transform. Yeah. Hmm. We don't need to transform. It's string. Function ID. Okay. So we now do. We create a result with new log new array logs dot length minus one fill with zero. And now. For let log of logs function ID uh, flag uh, timestamp equals uh, log split uh, column, right? For the timestamp, better we uh, better we to transform into number. So I'll do something like this. Okay. Now, when we are uh, calculating the segments, we meting a we meting an index. We need to previous one, right? When the previous one is used, we update the previous one to current one. So we could use a prev timestamp. to calculate the length of the uh, length of the segment. So, so here's the problem. If the if the stack is is empty, we what we do if it is empty, we just push right. So, call stack push 
function ID and nothing is changed. Yeah. It should be start with zero. She should? Yeah, it should be start with zero. This need to confirm with the better confirm with the interviewer. But it should be. And if not, if there is an element in, in there, right? If the already like uh, the first segment is uh, like this log is already in there, we need to check if the next one is end or start, right? So if flag equals to uh, end, if it is end, what we do, we need to pop the previous one, right? So let's say the uh, length would be uh, timestamp. Remember, when we are ending, it at the end. So the minus period timestamp, a plus one. We update the previous timestamp time, time, time to timestamp, right? Yeah, and then we do what? We pop, uh, pop, pop the previous one. Right? Yeah. Top function equals uh, like uh, current function equals call stack uh, pop. And then we update the re result. Current function plus uh, length. If it is a start, if it is start, we all still we get an end, but this time it's both start. So there's no plus one. And uh, previous time equals timestamp. Well, this actually could be moved at the, at the end here. And then we, we don't pop, but we push. Call stack push function ID. But don't remember to update the result, which is call stack length minus one, right? So the top one, like zero, we update the result to length. Yeah, and uh, we update the previous time. Okay, and finally, we could return result. Let's try to review our code before we submit our uh, implementation. First, we have a stack result up result uh, is initialized to zero. Keep a pre flag, and for each log, we extract the function ID, flag, and timestamp. Parse the timestamp to integer. If this call stack is then we push. It's okay. For if it's n, we need to pop the previous one, right? Pop the previous one, which is this, and but update the length. Of, of current. So current function, uh, we update an nth. Nth, remember, is the end at the ending. So we need to, like 5, 5, 2, it should be 4. So plus 1. And uh, for the start, it's also, we just push the push, push the function n and uh, update the pre current function, which is this one. Yeah, the nth. So it should work. Hmm? It's not. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Oh, the array has a problem. This log, it's not log nth, it's n, right? But still, there's a problem, it seems. We're getting wrong answer of this, hmm? which is a little weird. If it's zero, we push in, okay, and then zero start at two because its flag is start, and then it would be uh, two, right? 
so we set cost stack, cost stack net minus one. This should be uh, zero. Okay, result zero plus nth two, and then we push zero in. Okay, previous time equals timestamp. Okay, which means two. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what happened. The previous time is for ending. The previous should be plus one. If for start, it should be itself. Hmm, this is a very tricky place. Cool. Let's submit. Yeah, we accept it. Let's try to analyze the time and space complexity. Time. We actually traverse through all the log, right? So n o count of logs space. We use a we use a stack to keep track of uh, the function call stack. So it's for worst case, it's n, right? Worst. That's so okay, that's all for this problem. Hope it helps. See you next time. Bye bye.